Welcome everybody to our Zoom service. Uh, this is the fifth Sunday in Epiphany. Uh, Epiphany um, is one of those seasons which um, uh, is variable because it um, uh, depends on when Easter is as to how long Epiphany is going to be. So we only have one more Sunday uh, in Epiphany. Like next Sunday is the last Sunday in Epiphany. So 17th of February is Ash Wednesday, and we are going to do a Zoom service at 6 p.m. Now, in case anybody goes into a panic, we are not going to use Ash. So there's going to be no mess um, unless you decide to make a mess. We will simply, I will simply adapt the service, and you will simply be invited to make the sign of the cross on your uh, forehead. Uh, but without ash or black paint or anything that's going to be messy. Okay, but uh, you'll get a, a notification uh, from B about it, but um, it's uh, Ash Wednesday, 17th of February, uh, 6 p.m. So uh, I'll now ask uh, Ray to begin our service. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be God's kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Set us free, O God, from the bondage of our sins and give us the liberty of that abundant life, which you have made known to us in your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The first reading is from Isaiah. Have you not known, have you not heard, has it not been told you from the beginning? Have you not understood from the foundations of the earth? Is it he who sits above the circle of the earth and its inhabitants are like grasshoppers who stretches out the heavens like a curtain and spreads them like a tent to live in, who brings princes to naught and makes the rulers of the earth as nothing. Scarcely are they who planted Scarcely sown, scarcely has their stem taken root in the earth. When he blows upon them and they wither, 
and the tempest carries them off like stubble. To whom then will you compare me? Or who is my equal, says the Holy One? Lift up your eyes on high and see who created these. He who brings out the host and numbers them, calling them all by name, because he is great in strength, mighty in power, not one is missing. Why do you say, O Jacob, and speak, O Israel? My way is hidden from the Lord, and my right is disregarded by my God. Have you not known? Have you not heard? The Lord is everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He is not faint or grown weary. His understanding is unsearchable. He gives power to the faint and strengthens the powerless. Even those will faint and be weary, and the young will fall exhausted. But those who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. The word of the Lord. Sing to the Lord with thanksgiving. Hallelujah. How good it is to sing praises to our God. How pleasant it is to honor him with praise. The Lord rebuilds Jerusalem. He gathers the exiles of Israel. He heals the brokenhearted and binds up their wounds. He counts the number of stars and calls them all by their names. Great is our Lord and mighty in power. There is no limit to his wisdom. The Lord lifts up the lowly, but casts the wicked to the ground. Sing to the Lord with thanksgiving. Make music to our God upon the harp. He covers the heavens with clouds and prepares rain for the earth. He makes grass grow upon the mountains and green plants to serve mankind. He provides food for flocks and herds and for the young ravens when they cry. He is not impressed by the might of a horse. He has no pleasure in the strength of a man. But the Lord has pleasure in those who fear him, in those who await his gracious favor. Hallelujah. The second reading today is from 1 Corinthians. If I proclaim the gospel, this gives me no ground for boasting, for an obligation is laid on me, and woe to me if I do not proclaim the gospel. For if I do this of my own will, I have a reward. But if not of my own will, I am entrusted with a commission. What then is my reward? Just this, that in my proclamation, I may make the gospel free of charge, so as not to make full use of my rights in the gospel. For though I am free with respect to all, I have made myself a slave to all, so that I might win more of them. To the Jews I became as a Jew, in order to win Jews. To those under the law, I became as one under the law. Though I myself am not under the law, so that I might win those under the law. To those outside the law, I became as one outside the law. Although I am not free from God's law, but am under Christ's law, so that I might win those outside the law. To the weak, I became weak, so that I might win the weak. I have become all things to do all, to all people, that I might by all means save some. I do it all for the sake of the gospel, so that I may share in its blessings. The word of the Lord. <clears throat> God of mercy, God of grace, show the brightness of thy face, shine upon us, Savior, shine, fill thy church with light divine. And thy saving help extend unto God's remotest end. 
Let the people praise the Lord. Be by all and live adored. Let the nations shout and sing. Glory to their Savior King. Let all be. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to St. Mark. Glory to you, Lord Christ. When Jesus and his disciples left the synagogue, they entered the house of Simon and Andrew with James and John. Now, Simon's mother-in-law was in bed with a fever, and they told him about her at once. He came and took her by the hand and lifted her up. Then the fever left her, and she began to serve them. That evening at sundown, they brought him all who were sick or possessed with demons. The whole city was gathered around the door. And he cured many who were sick with various diseases and cast out many demons. And he would not permit the demons to speak because they knew him. In the morning, while it was still very dark, he got up and went out to a deserted place. And there he prayed. And Simon and his companions hunted for him. When they found him, they said to him, everyone is searching for you. He answered, let's go to the neighboring towns so that I may proclaim the message there also. For that is what I came out to do. And he went throughout Galilee, proclaiming the message in their synagogues and casting out demons. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Let us go on to the neighboring towns so that I may proclaim the message there also. As is often the case in St. Mark's Gospel, the evangelist compresses many events into a short summary. Relieving Simon's mother-in-law of a fever, curing sickness and casting out demons, praying and proclaiming the message though actually all these are about proclaiming the message. So let's have a closer look at these events. Simon Peter's mother-in-law had a fever which had confined her to bed. Jesus took her hand and lifted her up. The fever left her and she began to serve them. He took her hand one of the many sad effects of our pandemic is the isolation of people. And those who have contracted COVID and have become seriously ill and have died have often been cut off from their friends, families and loved ones. Touch has had to be suspended for fear of contracting the virus. One of the outcomes of these strange times should I hope be a greater appreciation of fellowship and personal presence. The giving of the peace in our services, in person services, carries a deeper meaning than just saying peace. But the lesson from our lesson is that no one dies alone. In that act of touching, Jesus is there with the sick touching them. The result of Jesus's encounter with this woman, who you may note is unnamed, she's simply described as Simon's mother-in-law. But the result was that the fever left and she served them. Now one of the constant temptations is to read into the gospel a meaning that was not intended. 
and to miss the meaning that was intended. So we might be tempted to say, poor woman, just free of fever, and she has to wait on these people, these disciples, these men, typical. But the word serve here is the same word from which we get the word deacons. It is service in the sense of ministry. Being touched in some way or other by the love of God in Jesus is always an invitation to minister, to become in some small way part of proclaiming the message of God's love. Next, Jesus performs cures, including those possessed by demons. Casting out demons seems strange and superstitious to 21st century Western ears. And it conjures up those scenes uh, we sometimes see in those movies where a clergy person is laying on hands of someone who is with much shaking or drama and shrieking. Now, actually, most dioceses do have designated people who are trained in what is now called deliverance ministry. It seems that after all medical issues and other diagnoses are ruled out, there are some occasional circumstances where an inexplicable force of evil seems to be at work. But we need to realize that that is rare and is a very specialized ministry. I'm certainly not trained in it. And those that are are few and they never work on their own. For most of us, the God given skills of healing are left, best left to professional medical people. Our part though, our ministry is to be compassionate and supportive of all those with illness, from a common cold and flu to more serious things, to be compassionate and supportive. But the demonic evil takes many forms, and our ministry may sometimes be no more than naming and calling out bad behavior. There are also in some cases where people are simply tormented by guilt and need to hear words of forgiveness and acceptance. The ministry of healing with laying on of hands and anointing with oil can be a spiritual balm. It's a ministry we can do and it can lead to wholeness and healing, which is God's business. It's probably no accident that St. Mark says that Jesus then withdrew for prayer. That is a ministry to which we are all called and can do. To give thanks for all that we have and the opportunities God gives us, as well as praying for the health and well-being of all and for justice and mercy throughout God's world. That is something we are all called to do and can do. Healing and praying were and are part of the good news about God's love and care. And Jesus went to neighboring towns to spread the message. Mark gives us a picture of an ever widening circle. From Simon's uh, house uh, to those who were brought to him, uh, to uh, the near neighboring towns throughout Galilee. And as the gospel continues, further afield in Israel. In our second reading, Paul talks about proclaiming the gospel. To the Jews, he became a Jew, while well, he was a Jew. But to those outside the Jewish religious regulations and language, that is, to Gentiles, he became as a Gentile. He says, I became all things to all people. That doesn't mean that Paul was wishy-washy and fluid in his faith, agreeing with whoever he happened to be with and doing whatever they did. 
It means he adapted his Christian commitment according to the circumstances. It was about sharing his gifts, fellowship and insights in different situations and according to the situation. It is certainly not about knocking on doors as some religious groups do, asking if a person is saved and handing them a leaflet. It's about being like Simon's mother-in-law, serving, ministry, where and whenever we can, however little or insignificant it may seem, and doing it in gratitude that God in Christ has touched our lives and made us better in some way, so we try to touch the lives of others also for the better. We are indeed called to serve, to minister. Amen. Good morning and welcome brothers and sisters and also welcome to those who may be visiting for the first time. Uh, this service is uh, provided by the Middlesex Area Cluster Ministry Network consisting of St. Andrews in Northford, St. James in, Kill in Higginham and Emmanuel Church in Killingworth. I invite you, if you have your Book of Common Prayer in front of you, to turn to page 358 and let us affirm together our beliefs in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God, true God from true God. Begotten, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became the heart of the Virgin Mary and was made him. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He, he suffered death, death and was, and was buried. buried. On the On third day, he rose again in, in accordance with the scriptures. scriptures. He, he ascended into heaven, heaven and is seated at the right hand, 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 hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will be no end. end. We, we believe, believe in the Holy Spirit. Spirit. <clears throat> The Lord, the giver of life, life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in the Holy Catholic and Apostolic Church. We acknowledge one and one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We and look for the resurrection of the dead and, and the life of the world to come. Amen. Amen. Well, today is Super Bowl day, so I found a little story that I can share with you on this day. A guy took his girlfriend to the Super Bowl game. They had great seats right behind the team's bench. After the game, he asked her, Oh, she liked it. Oh, I really liked it, she replied, especially the tight pants and all the big muscles. But I just couldn't understand why they were killing each other over 25 cents. Dumbfounded, her boyfriend asked, what do you mean? Well, they flipped the coin, one team got it, and then for the rest of the game, all they kept screaming was, get the quarterback, get the quarterback. I'm like, hello, it's only 25 cents. A few weeks back, we went uh, to the catechism and read the information 
about the church. And since Father Spink's sermon today was about the ministry, I'd like to take the time, if you would like, and invite you to page 855, and Deb and I will go through the ministry in the Catechism. Who are the ministers of the church? The ministers of the church are lay persons, bishops, priests, and deacons. What is the ministry of the laity? The ministry of lay persons is to represent Christ and his church, to bear witness to him wherever they may be, and according to the gifts given them to carry on Christ's work of reconciliation in the world and to take their place in the life, worship, and governance of the church. What is the ministry of a bishop? The ministry of a bishop is to represent Christ and his church, particularly as apostle, chief priest, and pastor of a diocese, to guard the faith, unity, and discipline of the whole church, to proclaim the word of God, to act in Christ's name for the reconciliation of the world and the building up of the church and to ordain others to continue Christ's ministry. What is the ministry of a priest or presbyter? The ministry of a priest is to represent Christ and his church, particularly as pastor to the people, to share with the bishop in the overseeing of the church to proclaim the gospel, to administer the sacraments, and to bless and declare pardon in the name of God. What is the ministry of a deacon? The ministry of a deacon is to represent Christ and his church, particularly as a servant of those in need, and to assist bishops and priests in the proclamation of the gospel and the administration of the sacraments. What is the duty of all Christians? The duty of all Christians is to follow Christ, to come together week by week for corporate worship, to work, pray, and give for the spread, excuse me, give for the spread of the kingdom of God. The prayers of the people will continue on page 387, form Three. Father, we pray for your holy Catholic Church. That we, we all, all may be one. Grant that every member of the church may truly and humbly serve you. That, that your, your name, name may be glorified by all people. people. <clears throat> we pray for all bishops, priests, and deacons that, that they, they may, may be faithful, faithful ministers of your word and sacraments we pray for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world that there may, there may be justice and peace on the earth give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake that our works may find favor in your sight have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble. But they may they be delivered from, from their distress. Give to the departed eternal rest. Let, Let light perpetually shine from them. them. We praise you for your saints who have entered into joy. May we, may we also come to share in your kingdom. Let us pray now for our own needs and those of others. We have prayers from Helen for Kelly alone, who has chemo on Tuesday. Also, um, with the weather that has been of recent days, um, there's a lot of ice still out there. And there was an elderly man who fell outside of Ashley's Garden in Deep River. We pray for him. And also for Garnett, who took quite a large spill yesterday. And hope his shoulder heals well. Continue prayers for Nan's brother-in-law, who is doing well. Leslie would like us to pray for DeWitt, who
Tilly is suffering from COVID and is in the hospital. Our prayers go out to the Williams family. Lisa has asked us to pray for her aunt and uncle who have recently tested positive for COVID. And that goes for all of those who are suffering from COVID. We ask prayers and give thanks for our children and for our pets. We also pray for those who are suffering for any reason. And in some cases, it may be because you're having issues with a business. Uh, we pray for those who are trying to survive in this world that we're living in at this time. We give thanks for all that we are and all that we can be. Lord, we pray that the Lord Jesus may be exalted in all we do. And may we submit to the leading of the Holy Spirit in all we undertake. Open ministry doors as you see fit, so that we may shed abroad more of your saving and sanctifying grace to those <laughs> in need. May we continue to grow in grace and wisdom and in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. And may all we say and do point others to Jesus so that his name is glorified in all that we say and do. Amen. Amen. We also pray for the repose of the soul of Jim and Marlene who passed from COVID. And again, for thanksgivings for our Sex Area Cluster Ministry Network and those celebrating birthdays and anniversaries this week. Amen. Lord our God, accept the fervent prayers of your people. In the multitude of your mercies, look with compassion upon us and all who turn to you for help. For you are gracious, O lover of souls, and to you we give glory, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. God has made us one in Christ. He has set his seal upon us and, as a pledge of what is to come, has given the Spirit to dwell in our hearts. The peace of the Lord be always with you. It's also with you. And this, uh, I invite you to, those of you that have your elements of bread and wine, to, uh, to take them now. Um, I'm going to pray again uh, this week, Eucharistic Prayer D from the Book of Common Prayer that you'll find on page 372. Um, <clears throat> it is um, a version of the Eastern Prayer of St. Basil, or Basil as it's often said around here. Um, and uh, um, I use this prayer in uh, in epiphany because for the eastern churches epiphany is a very uh, important season of the year um, uh, christmas on the 25th of december uh, was a later western well for third century feast originally january the 6th was kept as uh, christmas and epiphany all in one and so that is why in the East, it's still uh, January the 6th is still important. And uh, one of the Eastern churches, the Armenian Orthodox Church, doesn't keep the 25th of December at all. It only keeps January the 6th as Feast of the Incarnation. So Epiphany is a very important uh, season for the Eastern churches. And so use this prayer D, which is based on one of the important Eucharistic prayers of the Eastern churches. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. It is truly right to glorify you, Father, and to give you thanks. For you alone are God, living and true, dwelling in light and accessible from before time and forever. Fountain of life and source of all goodness, you made all things and fill them with your blessing. You created them to rejoice in the splendor of your radiance. 
countless throngs of angels stand before you to serve you night and day. And beholding the glory of your presence, they offer you unceasing praise. Joining with them and giving voice to every creature under heaven, we acclaim you and glorify your name as we say, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of power and might. Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We acclaim you, Lord, Holy Lord, glorious in power. Your mighty works reveal your wisdom and love. You formed us in your own image, giving the whole world into our care, so that in obedience to you, our creator, we might rule and serve all your creatures. When our disobedience took us far from you, you did not abandon us to the power of death. In your mercy, you came to our help so that in seeking you, we might find you. Again and again, you called us into covenant with you and through the prophets, you taught us to hope for salvation. Father, you love the world so much that in the fullness of time, you sent your only son to be our savior. Incarnate by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, he lived as one of us, yet without sin. To the poor, he proclaimed the good news of salvation, to prisoners freedom, to the sorrowful joy. To fulfill your purpose, he gave himself up to death and rising from the grave, destroyed death and made the whole creation new that we might live no longer for ourselves, but for him who died and rose for us, he sent the Holy Spirit, his own first gift for those who believe, to complete his work in the world and to bring to fulfillment the sanctification of all. When the hour had come for him to be glorified by you, his heavenly Father, having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. At supper with them he took bread, and when he given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took a cup of wine and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Father, we now celebrate this memorial of our, this memorial of our redemption, recalling Christ's death and his descent among the dead, proclaiming his resurrection and ascension to your right hand, awaiting his coming glory, and offering to you from the gifts you've given us this bread and this cup, we praise you and we bless you. We praise you, we bless you. Bless you. We give thanks, thanks to you and we pray to you, Lord our God. Lord, God. Lord, we pray that in your goodness and mercy, your Holy Spirit may descend upon us and upon these gifts, sanctifying them and showing them to be holy gifts for your holy people bread of life and the cup of salvation, the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Grant that all who share this bread and cup may become one body and one spirit, a living sacrifice in Christ to the praise of your name. Remember, Lord, your one holy Catholic and apostolic church, redeemed by the blood of your Christ. Reveal its unity, guard its faith, and preserve it in peace. Remember all who minister in your church. Remember all your people and those who seek your truth. Remember all who have died in the peace of Christ and those whose faith is known to you alone. Bring them into the place of eternal joy and light. And grant that we may find our inheritance with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with patriarchs, prophets, apostles and martyrs, with St. James and St. Andrew and all the saints who have found favour with you in ages past. We praise union, union with them 
and give you glory through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Through Christ, and with Christ, and in Christ, all honour and glory are yours, Almighty God and Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, for ever and ever. Amen. Amen. Now, as our Saviour Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, Therefore let us, let keep, us keep, keep the feast. Alleluia. The gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. The body of Christ keep you in eternal life. Amen. The blood of Christ keep you in eternal life. Amen. Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> Christ, the Son of God, perfect in you the image of his glory and gladden your hearts with the good news of his kingdom. The blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen. to sing my great Redeemer praise, the glory of my God and King, the triumphs of His grace. My gracious Master and my God, assist me to proclaim and spread through all abroad the honors of thy name. Jesus, the name that charms our fears and bids our sorrows cease. Tis music in the sinner's ears, tis life and health and peace. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be, Thanks be to God. God. Hallelujah.